close video for you today. This one is the Peridot gift box from Tonic. Um, it's a really clever die set actually because just from this one die set you can make a four-sided box, a six-sided box and an eight-sided box and you have everything you need to create all of them in this one set. Um, and how you do it is cutting different multiples of these two pieces and using either the squares, the hexagons or the octagons to create the top and the base of your box. So, um, I've got a few examples. Oh yeah, it, firstly this die set, um, I haven't got it in the original packaging so I'm not sure exactly what the packaging is going to look like. And this die set is slightly different to the one you will get when you buy it. I'm missing one of the dies and um, some of the glue tabs uh, will be a little bit smaller on the ones that um like the proper ones that you will be buying because we get the prototype ones to be able to make the samples for the show so um i just wanted to say that in case anybody looks at this and thinks it doesn't look the same as theirs when they get it um but i wanted to film this video whilst i had um all of my samples with me otherwise i've got to make some more to be able to film the video so um at the end of this video there is a construction section of showing you exactly how to construct this six-sided version of the box um, and the construction of the four-sided, six-sided or eight-sided is all the same you're just using different tops and bottoms which you have in the die set um, but I just wanted to show you one of them um, as a construction and that will also be a separate video as well if you just want to skip to the construction rather than listening to me waffle on about the die set um, so let's have a closer look at the die set. We have, um, well we have two sentiments to begin with. We have this triangular gift tag shape and one of them says um, a little dose of happy and I think this one says a little box of love. Um, it's a little bit to read, a little bit difficult to read when it's like backwards and just, just in die form but I think that's what they say. Um, so I haven't cut them out yet. Uh, and then we have um, two different designs for the sides of the boxes. Um, we have a gorgeous sort of more masculine, well it's, I don't know it's kind of feminine but um, it's more of just like a geometric repeating pattern which is, I really like this one, it kind of looks like little um, reef designs and those little um, circles are perfect for three millimeter gemstones which in the, uh, what are they called, I think they're called crystal crystal ones, the um, Nouveau crystal gemstones, the th they have three millimetre ones inside there which perfectly fit over those little um, holes or they're perfect for putting your Nouveau drops in as well and I'll show you um, an example of both. And then we have the gorgeous um, floral element which also looks gorgeous um, and it has kind of like tulipy roses and, and a daisy inside it as well. And then you have the, for the next well, for, yeah, this piece is sort of inside the box and you have um, the rows and then the sort of repeating pattern to go with them too. And also for the tops of the boxes, you have uh, two of them with that sort of repeating pattern um, element that you could add to the top of the box and the hexagonal one has got um, a, f a rose on the top, like a floral element to go with the floral side. And then um, for the last panel of the, well no there's two more panels you can decorate, for the one that sort of tucks under the box you have a sort of little rainbow one and a straight line one and then for the top of the box you have uh, different triangles to layer up and one with a frilly edge that matches the frilly edge um, of the main panels that you get so you get a straight edge and a frilly edge on the main panels then um, as well as getting these two designs, there is also another die that goes with these two to create a third design for the sides of the boxes. I did it on this one, so um, you use you. It's kind of yeah. I I was a bit confused about these dies to begin with because we haven't got a picture of how they go together. But I was like, I wonder what on earth these ones are supposed to be for because it's like they've got weird angles on them if you line the straight edge up the bottoms aren't at the same angle the sides aren't at the same angle and I was getting really confused and I was like what on earth are these for and then I realized that they're to go inside the panel so one of them fits perfectly with the angle of the top of the panel where it tapers inwards and one of them fits perfectly with the bottom of the panel where it tapers outwards and then the die I don't have I think is supposed to fit um, inside there and it's actually another word die and it says surprise on it and that should fit in that section um, 
to complete the panel and give it a full design as well. Although I really like it as it is, and I just added some drops on there to make it look a little bit different. But um, yeah, I definitely wanted to explain how to use those two dies because it took me a while to figure out what you're supposed to use them for. But I'm so glad I did because I really like that design. It's really um, intricate and I love um, swirly, flourishy designs as well. So that is the sides of the boxes. Also, another thing I was going to say, if you got the terrarium gift box die set from Tonic, it's a similar concept to that, but you can make it with different numbers of sides really easily. But um, the concept is the same with that bottom piece. Um, if you remember, the terrarium one has a bottom piece like this, um, but the top piece is a cone shape rather than having that flop flat prism top, not flop, <laughs> um, it kind of goes up into a point at the top um, but it's the same principle really except this bottom piece is easier to construct because it's all in um, it's all in separate panels rather than having the bottom joined to the first bit and then you stick the top bit on. You'll know what I mean if you have the terrarium one. I just find or found this one um, quicker to put together because you have it in uh, a panel of two. Um, yeah so it's a similar concept to the terrarium one. Um, and then, the genius thing about this die set is, because they've done it in panels of two, um, you can create it for a four-sided, six-sided or eight-sided box, and you use these dies here that you get, which look like little mini nesting die sets, um, and you literally use these to help you create your boxes. So, um, the way I was doing it, because I wasn't sure exactly which ones were going to work, the way I did it is I started to construct the box and then you ju you're just left with a hole in them. So for example, if you construct a four-sided one, this bottom, you would just be left with four glue tabs there and then you go, oh, I wonder um, what size of die I'm going to need to do that with. So you just pick a square die and put it on top and then you go, oh yeah, that one is going to work perfectly and then you die cut it and stick it on top. The square one's really easy because you get two squares One's the, bo one's the bottom and one's the top, so the square's an easy example, but with the the octagonal one was the first one I made, it was this purple one, and so I was a bit like, hmm, there's three octagons there, but I don't know which ones um, are the ones I use, but the biggest one is the bottom of the box, and the medium straight-edged one is the top of the box, but... Um, to save you having to remember that, you can just make the box up and then you realise there's a hole there and then all you do is uh, you take one of the straight edge dies out of the set and then just go, oh yeah, that is the right one, and then you can die cut it. So I explain that in the construction video um, that's coming up after this as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's all of the die set. Oh, and actually though, um, in the octagonal and hexagonal little nesting ones, you get this cool ruffly edge which sort of matches one of the panels, um, one of the decorative panels, but I thought, I wonder if you can make a flower with that, and I actually used it on the side of this box. I cut two of the hexagons, two of the octagons, and I just snipped into them, and then layered them all together, and it just sort of creates a nice little ruffly flower. So. Um, I know a lot of people like adding flowers to their boxes, me included, um, so I just thought I wanted to try and uh, make some kind of floral element out of the dice that you got in with the die set. So that is the die set, and then I wanted to show you my examples that I've made. So I have done two four-sided ones, I've done one six-sided one, and then I've done two eight-sided ones, all with different um, kinds of decoration, really. So, with the four-sided ones, this one, um, I thought it would look nice to try and make it look like stone. Um, so, I cut everything out of grey cardstock, all of the panels, all of the main part of the box. I cut everything out of grey card, then I layered them on top of each other, and then first of all, I used gunmetal grey nouveau mousse to add some colour to them, and then... Uh, once that was dry, I came back in and, like, in this bottom bit, I filled in the whole rainbow and I just added blobby areas. Um, some of the grey matter, is that what it's called? Yes, grey matter um, Nouveau Expanding Mousse. And I just scraped that on with a palette knife and then all you do is heat it. And then, to go with the stone theme, I added some of the boulder grey stone drops to the top of the box as well. And I did that before I assembled it, so everything was completely flat as I was decorating all of this and then I put it together. 
um, but I didn't add any expanding mousse on these parts of the box just because um, it wouldn't go inside as easily if you'd uh, made that thicker. But then the next one I did, um, I wanted to add loads of little gems to it and have a sort of scattering of flowers going up the box. So this one has got loads of 3mm gems all in those little holes. It takes a lot of gems because when I was blobbing on the glue for the side panels, each side panel takes 20 gems. So if you decorate the entire thing it's probably near to 100 gems. Um, that you're decorating it with and I did also decorate the inside piece which then when I was putting it together I was like oh um, that's that's raised gems and I need to get them to fit inside so for this one I actually um, just added like an extra millimetre just when I was sticking both um, sections together just to make that a tiny bit bigger so that that fits inside perfectly and also for this one I cut the design um, directly into the blue cardstock which is, was um, what I cut the main panels out of and then I added the um, taupe coloured cardstock um, inside as well and to cut that cardstock out you can either just use the outside edge um, of the panels and die cut them or you can um, like cut one out with the die and then just use it as a template and cut the rest out with scissors to save you a bit of die cutting time as well. So that was my second four-sided um, Peridot one. Then the six-sided one, if you was to near the end of this video, um, you'll find the construction for this box as well. Um, and this one, I went, I did more of the decorating on this one because I used all of the panels. Um, so on this one, I only used those big side panels and the inside side panels. On this one, I used the triangles on the top, the main side, the bottom, and the inside, and I did the same for this one. Um, so I used all of the panels, and I even added the top one on this one as well. Um, so it's got the little triangles, and all of this is decorated. And the way I did these was I cut the panels out with, I think it's called Red Velvet, um, the Satin Mirror Card from Craft Perfect. Um, then I stuck that onto adhesive sheets and added gold glitter over them and then trimmed round them and stuck them onto the elements. So this made it much easier because you didn't have to add glue to all the back of the intricate elements, you just stuck it onto the double sided and then because you'd put it on double sided it was like a sticker when you stuck it on the box as well. Um, and then I finished off with some of the golden oval um, gems around the top, I think the gems really work nicely on these boxes as well. So that was my six sided version and then um, I did two eight sided versions as well. So we have a purple one and this gorgeous blue one. Um, the purple one I kept the decoration kind of simple um, only really decorating the large panels and the top um, not doing any of the triangles here or any of the decoration on the base. I just kept the base really nice and plain. And for all the side panels, um, I cut them out of mirror card first, uh, so the outside with the intricate detail. Then I stuck them to a darker colour of purple cardstock and I added some um, Midas Touch glitter pen through it just to give a little bit of uh, glitter in the background. And then I went back in with Plum Pudding Nouveau Crystal Drops and added a drop to each of those um, centre dots on the pattern. Because it was a, a dot, you do get a hole in the middle of your Nouveau Drops, but if you wanted to avoid that, you could do this, and then obviously you leave them all flat. Um, then you could go back and add another dot on top of them, then they would be the perfect sort of domes. But I quite like the way... Um, they had the little hole in the centre of them, I thought that looked quite nice, so I left it like that. And I just stuck them um, to all of the eight sides of the box, I made that little ruffly flower, and then I did the same thing for that little top element, and then I used some of the rose triads and the amethyst squares um, to decorate the rest of the sort of prism, or the uh, cut um, stone sort of look to the top of the box. And then, for my final box, the other eight-sided one, um, I did a little bit more decorating on this one, and I decided to mix it up a bit and use um, a different colour for those two sections. So on all of my other boxes, I've used the same colour 
to finish off the bottom and the top of the box but for this one I thought I want to tie those panels in better so I used the colour of the panel to do those top pieces and you can see inside um, it's you know the light blue was the main box and then I stuck that on the top um, and the bottom then on this one uh, to make the cardstock look a little bit more interesting and not just the light blue colour I actually took some uh, Atlantic Drift um, Nouveau Glitter Accents and I brayed it on so you just um, squeeze out a little bit of this onto like the backing sheet from a double sided adhesive sheet um, and then get your brayer, pick it up on the brayer and just randomly brayer it all over the pieces while they're flat obviously um, and it just gives a little bit of sparkle to all of your panel pieces then I use those odd shaped triangle dies uh, with the roughly edge to cut all of my panel pieces out um, and then I cut out the sort of vertical stripe ones for the bottom as well and then obviously whilst all of these pieces were just flat and I hadn't stuck them on yet I went through with, I think it's called duck egg, yeah duck egg blue uh, nouveau, normal nouveau drops and some of that Atlantic drift um, glitter accents to add um, nouveau drops all the way along all of these pieces and I also filled in those little uh, rectangle areas on the bottom pieces as well um, and then I let all of that dry and then I stuck them all to the box and I also added on some of the water droplet uh, gems from Nouveau as well which I think go really nicely on that I really like that um, yeah so that was all of my boxes that I've made using this Peridot um, gift box die set and so I hope you enjoyed having a look at the different sizes of boxes that you can make with this die set um, and a few ideas for how to decorate them and also the up close look at the die set as well um, and then don't forget uh, I will now insert the uh, footage of how I constructed this box and that will also be a separate video as well if you just want to come back and check out the construction of the box too so um, I hope you enjoyed this part of the video and uh, stay tuned for the next bit uh, let's get on with the uh, six-sided box. So, for the six-sided box, you need three of each of the pieces. For the two-sided, you need two of... Oh, sorry, for the four-sided, you need two of each. And for the eight-sided, you need four of each. Um, you can actually get all of these out of one piece of A4. Um, if you see, if you cut them like this, if you cut um, your A4 piece into, like, uh, ten and a half centimetre strips, like a sort of DL size, um, they will... Uh, fit on there perfectly well, actually you need to cut them into just less than 10 but yeah they fit you can get all of the pieces out of an A4 is basically what I'm saying and then you just need a tiny bit of extra card to cut out the two um, hexagons to go on the top and the bottom of them um, for the glue tabs you want to uh, for the small piece you want to add it along um, all of these glue tabs that you have there really obvious where they are on this one and on this one you have the long one down the side and then you have these um, shorter ones next to the triangles because this uh, these triangular parts make that cool faceted look on the top which I think I think is why they called this the Peridot gift box because Peridot is like um, a cut stone um, and it really looks like a cut stone with all the sort of triangle elements inside them as well so that is uh, where you need to put all of your tape and then for this one I actually um, cut the panels out using one of the satin mirror cards I think I think it's called red velvet um, from tonic and I used the intricate edge on this one which is sort of a cool like it looks like um, deckled edge scissors you know you used to get those scissors that cut uh, patterns it looks like that um, and then this gorgeous panel it's got like um, a rose and another rose and then sort of a, a tulipy kind of flower and a daisy as well um, it's really pretty um, and so I cut that out then I stuck that onto some double sided adhesive and added some um, gold glitter to it and then I just trimmed around the edges and um, stuck them on because they're like stickers then because they've got double sided adhesive on them so it saves you having to uh, put adhesive behind all the little intricate areas if you're using double sided which is kind of the reason why I was doing it because it sort of saves a bit of time uh, yeah and I've done that for all of the panels because for these boxes you get the little tiny triangles to decorate up here and you also get all of these elements too these ones are going to get hidden inside the box when it's made 
but um, you've got them there so it looks pretty when someone opens it. And these ones, um, you probably don't need to put them on the eight-sided one because it will end up being on the bottom. It will be these pieces, so you won't really see it. But for the um, four-sided and six-sided, you might as well add them in if you want to because you'll be able to see it from the side. I didn't on this one, but you can see on the four-sided box you could really be able to see that decoration. So... Let's start with the bottom of the box. So for the bottom of the box we need that slightly larger hexagon um, and um, when you're making these you can put this, you're going to put all of these three pieces together first and then stick this on so if you're not quite sure which size of the hexagon oxygen square dies that you get in the die set to use for the top and the bottom just put everything together first then place the die on top just check that's the right one and then cut it out that's what I was doing um, but obviously um, I knew what size it was going to be because I've already made one of these so yeah um, so to make the bottom half we're going to just take the red liner tape off of um, these three tabs one on each of them um, on the top pieces and then we're literally just going to place them all together just lining up the side the cut line of one to the um, score line of the next one next to it just like that and then we'll do the other one as well and you can see here you're getting a kind of um, curved shape because of the um, angle of the side of the box as well and then you're just going to fold that around you can do the thing where you um, lay it flat and stick it on because it's um, got an even number of sides so we can just press that down so actually if you were making these to sell I suppose you'd have to give some instruction of how to put the bottom piece together but they would kind of go flat pack um, you know if you hadn't if you hadn't finished assembling them all and then the next part we've now got six tabs to do because they're all in separate pieces rather than two together so we're now going to take off um, all of these I just take them all off at once just because um, you know the little bits of red are really annoying and staticky so I tend to just try and take them all off at once so it's less annoying but if this is if this is the first time you're making one of these you might want to do uh, two or three tabs at a time so then all we do is we just follow um, that lining up the cut edge of one to the fold edge of the other and then it automatically just brings that shape in for you which I just love tonic dies, they're so easy to use imagine trying to work all of this out and you know I just I, I like angles and stuff but I think I'd get it quite a lot of it wrong and you know you'd sort of be annoyed with yourself but anyway um, the dies make it so much easier so that is the bottom of the six sided one and then you can see what I was talking about so um, if you're not sure which size of hexagon I mean it's kind of simple from the um, dies that you get but I, I wasn't quite sure to begin with which size of hexagon or octagon whatever, or square that I would need because um, they're kind of like you get a little set of sort of layering dies inside the set um, but all you do is you just take the die imagine this was just the, oh here's the die actually still got it here so this is what I did I put one together then I took the die and went oh yeah that's the perfect size so then I just cut it out and then you have the perfect sized bottom piece for your box so that's all you do to figure out what size one you need um, so I'm just going to take off all of the uh, glue tabs for this one and then we just want to place the bottom piece on just make sure all the sides are where you want them press it down as much as you can then flip it over and press it from the inside and for the square one you might want to um, like push a ball tool down just to make sure all the glue tabs are done but you can get your hands in the six and the eight sided ones so that is now the bottom of the box and we can compare the sizes so that is the eight sided one then the six sided one and then we also have the little four sided one as well so actually if you decorated these um, like minimally you could actually make like a nesting set of them maybe oh no 
the height the height would be a problem but they do fit inside each other yeah because you can see here um they're all different heights so actually the height would be a problem but that would be cool if that would work um but anyway so that is the size difference between the um different ones that you can make from this one set i just wanted to show you that so uh to make the top portion now so the bottom portion is done um really easy and then to do the top one we want to kind of do the same thing where we take off the um long glue flaps first so we can make the whole top piece and then we'll fiddle around with the the top sort of gem piece afterwards so we want to do that one on there and this is just lining up that cut line with the fold line here it's really simple to do that's basically all you've got to remember when you're putting together any of tonic boxes you know they're just that you're basically just butting up that cut line to the fold line and again um, it's got an even number of sides so we can fold that down and this one will go perfectly so we now we've now got the top piece that is going to fit on to that perfectly it's a little bit more of a snug fit when when you've decorated uh, these panels but it does still fit and for this one um, I wasn't really thinking and I stuck gems on this piece and then I was like oh no uh, it's probably not going to go together but if you see on this one I sort of just when I stuck these two panels together I left a little gap on uh, both sides so then that still fits over the top of it even though there are gems inside there it still fits um, so you can just think about that when you're putting them together then um, so the next part is really simple actually we're just going to take off the red liner tape for the next section which is uh, next to the triangle areas and we're going to leave that top one on because that's how you just put the top of the box on so we just want to take all of these off it does get a little tiny bit fiddly um, but because there's sort of not enough space to get your fingers in when you get round to the last one but um, again if you have the little pegs you can always um, keep it together with the pegs to help you as well so you're literally just putting that cut line up against the score line it's really simple and it's bringing in that um, kind of gem shape on the top of the box perfectly for you and then the last one's probably the most tricky just because there's not enough room to get both of your hands inside but um, yeah, that wasn't too bad so then you've just got that gorgeous sort of um, like cut gemstone sort of look on the top of the box and then again all I did for this one was I looked at the dies and then I went oh yeah that one's gonna fit absolutely perfectly and then I cut it out and I did the same thing that I did for the panel dies and I cut it out of that um, red velvet card and put the glitter behind it as well um, so all we need to do now is take off the red liner tape and I did stick that onto another piece of card as well so you didn't have the adhesive exposed on the back of it because otherwise there would be um, a sticky bit inside the box. Okay, there's one more piece. It's kind of tricky to tell if you've taken the backing off when you're working on red card but it's not too bad. And then all you do is place that on top of it and then this is where that like a ball tool or um, your creasing tool will come in handy. You just poke that down the end of the box and press all of those um, glue tabs down really firmly. And there's the finished box. So that now goes inside there perfectly. Let's zoom out again. Um, and you've got the gorgeous sort of um, cut stone look on top of the box and this is the size difference between um, the different boxes as well so as you can see if I line up um, the bottom of the top piece you can see the tops get bigger the smaller the box is and the bottoms get bigger the smaller the box is from how I explained in the beginning as well but I just think they're such nice boxes I just love this eight sided one I don't know why, as soon as I made it I was just like, it looks so cool. It kind of reminds me of like the Genesis arc from Doctor Who, but anyway. Um, 
yeah, so that that is the Perido gift uh, box die set from Tonic, um, and hopefully I'll do an up close video looking at the die set as well. Um, but this is just the construction video. This this part might be at the end of the um, up close video, but I like to do the construction video separately just in case you've bought the die set and you're coming onto YouTube and you're searching and trying to find how how to put it together. Um, I thought having a separate construction video would be useful. It'll be useful for me as well. Like years to come, you might forget how to put them together, but if you've already, or, always got like a video there, um, makes it much easier. You don't have to remember. Then you can just go and watch it. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you to see how the box goes together and then obviously for the eight sided you're adding one extra panel into the one I showed you and for the four sided you're using one less panel so it's exactly the same process for putting them together uh, yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one bye